Hi, I'm Bill Needham, Ham Radio Today. Welcome back. Got a good show planned for you today. My amateur call is K1WN, and the co-host on the studio, as always, is Pi. Come in and say hello, Pi. Hi, I'm Harold Pugh, K1RV, also known as Pi. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Jack Bins today. Jack Bins and how you stuck me behind the camera took me away from okay. the front of it. All right. As only you could do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tripped on a lake fill. So That's right. Go ahead, Pi. Uh, we're we, we're going to show some video that we shot last two, two weeks ago down at... Uh, K1VV's house, and uh, some of our operation that took place during the Jack Bins mm -hmm. event, uh, which there'll be a little bit more explanation of the event. Uh, you maybe saw the show from Bud last week and, uh, and learned a little bit about him. But uh, we'll, why don't we just get right into the, the video from at, at uh, Bob's at, house. Okay, so without more to do, we'll send it down to into the control room, and they'll switch it right over, and you'll see the, the event uh, marking Jack Benz down at Lakeville at K1 Victor Victor's house. Thanks. QRZ? QRZ from W1AA stroke MKC. And actually, that level of, of Morse code in the back. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we are with uh, Ham Radio today on the road with Bill and Pie. And today we're down in Lakeville, Massachusetts. We're at the home of Bob Darty, call sign K1VV or K1 Victor Victor. And Bob's been involved with uh, amateur radio almost as far back as uh, Mr. Marconi, not quite as far back as that, but. Uh, today we're down here to with a special event that uh, Bob has uh, put together, uh, an operating event down here at his at his house, and uh, we've got a couple of stations operating. They've been, they were operating last night, and we're going to operate some more here today on both voice and on on uh, CW. So I'm going to give it over to Bob, let him introduce himself, and uh, explain a little bit about the event today. It's uh, it's a pretty significant anniversary event. So with, without any further ado, I'm going to give it to Bob. Yes, <clears throat> yeah, my name is uh, Bob Darty. I Most people know me as Whitey. K1 Victor Victor is my call sign. And today we have uh, a couple of hams here and a couple of stations going at the same time here. One on uh, CW, one on phone. This is the 100th anniversary of the first rescue at sea by wireless in 1909. There was a collision between a... Um, a ship called uh, the Republic and another ship called the Florida off of Nantucket back in 1909. Uh, this was long before tubes and long before transistors. The transmitter they used was a spark gap transmitter. It was similar to a welding machine with an arc that could be detected and uh, what they used to detect them, this was uh, back when they used Cohero, which was a pre preceded the, the crystal set, the Galena crystal, and preceded tubes. Uh, we uh, have two call signs here. We use a W1AA call, which is the Marconi uh, club call, and with a stroke, and a BC stands for the Baltic, which was the ship that rescued uh, about 800 passengers on the Republic. Republic's call sign was MKC. It was Marconi equipment on the ship, so most of their call signs were the Marconi used either on land or sea was uh, they were preceded by an M. And this was long before the Federal Communications Commission. Anybody could pick their initials or or any other sequence of letters or numbers at that time. So the rescue took place in uh, in uh, 1909. The uh, passengers were removed from the ship, put, first put onto the Florida, which was the ship that collided with it, and then when the Baltic came, it had radio, or had wireless equipment, not radio equipment, and that that uh, also came to the rescue and took the the uh, passengers off of the off of the Baltic and I mean off of the uh, uh, the uh, of Florida and uh, onto the Baltic. The uh, station, there's also a station MSC, which is a 
Syosconset on uh, Nantucket, which coordinated this event with the ships at sea. It was one of Marconi's first shore base stations. It was in 1901 that that station uh, uh, was uh, built with about a 185-foot tower. It had a range at that time of about 180 to 200 miles at sea. So that's what we're doing here today on voice. We've talked all over Europe. Uh, we've made about less far, uh, say four or five hours into this event. We've made about uh, 300 contacts on voice and about 200 uh, so on uh, on code or CW. So we're looking to looking to uh, continue the rest of the day here. It's been a great event, and uh, we have a certificate if the stations work the W1AA stroke MKC. And uh, let me see, we have it right here. W1, if the uh, we also the, uh, if they work MKC and uh, W1 uh, stroke BC, they uh, they get the certificate. This is a picture of Jack Benz, which is the young 25-year-old radio operator that was on the Republic and uh, took part in this uh, first rescue at sea. And how long did he stay on uh, at the at the uh, radio? He was staying at about 24 hours. The way the Florida uh, collided with the Republic, it crushed his, it crushed his uh, uh, radio shack, which was built on the outside of the building. There weren't any rooms at that time. They just built a wooden building on most of the most of the ships to have the radio radio station, the wireless station. So I understand there was some very 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 intense fog. That's what caused the collision. They had a they had another they had another way of. Uh, called uh, submarine signal, which the uh, Baltic had and also which the Republic had. They had a bell in the bow of the ship below the waterline. And they would ring this bell and it could be detected up to 17 miles away underwater. The Baltic had a listening device, a hydrophone, on the port side and the starboard side with a set of earphones in the bridge. Now, if the sound came from the uh, the port side the sound would be louder in the left ear so the Baltic could actually detect the Republic as much as 17 miles away in the fog that was a development of uh, Reginald Pheasant and a well-known inventor uh, here in uh, south southeastern Massachusetts that made the first voice transmission across the Atlantic in uh, 1906 so we have a lot of history here in uh, in this part of the state on Cape Cod, the first uh, wireless transmission from the United States to Europe, 1903 by Marconi. Also, Pheasanton's inventions. And, and a first with this wireless rescue at sea. Prior to this time, the pro people probably all would have gone down with the ship. No one would have been able to find each other prior to this period. So it, it is a noteworthy event, scientific achievement of, of historical significance. So. But that's about the story from here. A lot of fun for the hams, and uh, we really we really enjoy putting these on. And uh, everyone likes to collect these unique, one-of-a-kind QSL cards, which are only for this event. Uh, it'll be 200 years. We hope to make it at the 200th anniversary, <laughs> but I, I don't think we'll be here. So it is a unique thing. It only it's only going to happen once. So 7-3 all around. This is Whitey K1 Victor Victor. Okay, why don't we start, uh, with it's safe pie, we'll start setting up and we'll, uh, we'll put this show on the road. Show okay. the, the CW on the phone. Okay, all right, good. Yeah, we're okay. going to now, okay, we, we, we start. We'll get right back. Yep. Okay, we'll be right back. Right. Yep. Quebec Delta. Uh, Gulf Bravo 5, Charlie, Quebec Delta. Uh, good signal, you're about a 5 and 7 here, 5 and 7. And this is W1AA stroke Bravo Charlie. Okay, Golf Bravo 5, uh, Charlie Quebec Delta. You get a great call sign there. It's a great Jack Vince call sign, and we appreciate the contact this morning. Uh, we're representing the Baltic with the Bravo Charlie uh, sub end on the call sign. So thanks very much for the contact. The operator name here is Henry, by the way, and you are about a 5 and 